and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, where we aim to maximize your understanding and minimize your need for memorization. Each episode will recap content, skills, and test-taking tips to help you succeed in May. I'm your host, Melanie Kingett, and your recap starts now. Hi, and welcome to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. Today's episode will recap activation energy. Let's zoom out. We're in Unit 3, Cellular Energetics. Topics 3.2 to 3.4. Our big idea is energetics. Sometimes I'm convinced that the hardest part of exercising is putting on your sneakers. I'm serious. Imagine you're currently on the couch, snuggled up with your dog or cat, and you need to muster up the effort to go for a run. (sighs) It's only 30 minutes, you say to yourself. It's easy. But this Netflix episode is also only 30 minutes. But this decision wasn't reached overnight. So... These difficulties are normal. Once you put your sneakers on, the rest seems to happen automatically. Headphones in, running playlist on, quick stretch, and you're off. It's not that you don't want to exercise. It's just that sometimes committing to an activity is difficult. Much like you, reactions need to put in a little bit of effort and prep in order for cellular activities to occur. Let's zoom in. First, let's debunk some myths and make our chemistry and physics colleagues happy. Myth number one. Energy is released when bonds are broken. I want the truth. The truth? Breaking bonds requires energy. The emphasis needs to be on the remaining energy of the products. Are they at a lower or higher energy level than reactants. Reactions require an input of energy, known as activation energy, to occur. Enzymes reduce how much energy is required for a chemical reaction to continue, and thus, make metabolism more efficient. Take note Before you forget. that the difference in energy from reactants to products remains the same in a catalyzed versus uncatalyzed reaction. Myth number two, energy is lost as heat. The laws of thermodynamics state that energy cannot be created or destroyed, and the entropy of a system is always increasing. All right, I'll tell you the truth. Energy isn't lost, it's just transferred. And while yes, it is difficult for biological systems to reuse and transfer heat energy into another form, it all comes out in the wash. Some chemical reactions are energy storing, while others are energy releasing. Two things to note. All molecules have energy stored in chemical bonds, with some having more energy than others. And chemical reactions involve the forming and breaking of these bonds. So what exactly is activation energy, and how does it come into play? That's the question before the American people, and only you can decide. Activation energy, indicated as capital E, subscript capital A, is the initial energy input for a chemical reaction to occur. Activation energy is typically applied by heat, which is absorbed by the reactant molecules, causing faster motion, greater collisions, and more strain on chemical bonds. Even those reactions which are exergonic, energy releasing with a negative delta G, need energy to place molecules and bonds into their unstable transition state. Reactant molecules don't stay in a transition state long, but quickly move on to the next step. Hi there, producer Brad here. You may be saying, what the H-E double heck is going on here? To that I'd say, this is a recording and I can't hear you. Now, I'm not usually given the chance to speak on the podcast because I'm not a teacher in the literal or figurative sense. I was at one point a student and a poor one. Therefore, I consider myself a bit of a connoisseur de tutor, which is Latin for tutor expert. So I know quality tutology when I see it. And the Absolute Recap virtual tutoring program is top notch. AP classes are challenging and sometimes you may need extra help. If you are looking for more in depth personalized support sign up for virtual tutoring with your favorite podcasting teacher each 60 minute session is held through zoom and is structured to meet your specific needs so if you have a big test coming up just can't master those multiple choice questions or need help improving your writing skills we've got you covered our tutors provide opportunities for you to practice content and skills with graded feedback visit our website to reserve a session with a tutor for your specific subject and time zone now back to the recap let's analyze two graphs 
to distinguish between energy storing and energy releasing reactions. The y-axis is Gibbs free energy and the x-axis is reaction progress. The line drawn on the graph shows how the energy level changes over time during a chemical reaction. Energy levels increase in both graphs at first, with the peak of each curve representing activation energy. It certainly looks like progress was being made. This hill will be smaller in catalyzed reactions, typically done with enzymes and cells. And that's a whole nother episode recap. Exergonic reactions have energy exiting the system, with reactants at a higher energy level than products. These reactions have a negative delta G, free energy value, and are spontaneous. Imagine yourself walking along the graft line. You go up and over the hill, then land in a lower valley. Examples of exergonic reactions include the formation of ADP and the process of cellular respiration. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, just transferred. Cellular respiration transfers energy from glucose into ATP, with many, many steps in between. Endergonic reactions require additional energy beyond activation, with reactants at a lower energy level than products. Energy is stored in these products. These reactions have a positive delta G and are not spontaneous. Imagine yourself again walking along the graft line. You go up and over the hill, coming down only partially before landing on a plateau. Examples of endergonic reactions include the formation of ATP and the process of photosynthesis. Where does this input of energy come from? Well, for ATP, perhaps it's chemiosmosis through ATP synthase. And for photosynthesis, thank you for the sunlight. Closing out with our analogy, you still want to go for a run with the reaction moving from the couch to the great outdoors. The activation energy required involved lacing up your sneakers with the transition state of starting your running playlist and stretching. Once in that transition state, you easily start your run. Activation energy values do vary from reaction to reaction, influencing reaction rate and spontaneity. The activation energy required for your run would have been much greater if instead of being on the couch, you were in bed asleep and in pajamas. Time for unit connections. You'll find activation energy in unit three with enzymes, the biological all right, what about the exam? Energy and graphing analogies can definitely show up, especially in the FRQs. You need to understand the concept of energy, but the equation for Gibbs free energy is beyond the scope of the exam. The biggest association here is with activation energy and enzymes. So be prepared to associate the two and predict outcomes of a disrupted system, like enzyme denaturing. To recap, activation energy is the input of energy required to get over the hump of a chemical reaction, no matter if endergonic or exergonic. This energy is typically achieved through heat and moves reactants to their transition state. Coming up next on the Absolute Recap Biology Edition, electron transport chains. Today's question of the day is about reactions. True or false? Delta G is constant in catalyzed and uncatalyzed reactions. For the answer to the question of the day, please follow us on Instagram at The Absolute Recap. That's the A-P-S-O-L-U-T-E Recap. Check out our website, theabsoluterecap.com, for episode schedules, study guides, virtual tutoring, and to sign up for our virtual classroom. The Absolute Recap is produced by Brad Kingett with music by Zach Caruso. Today's episode was written by me, Melanie Kingett. Thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to rate and review wherever you get podcasts. Time's up, pencils down. Thank you for listening to the Absolute Recap Biology Edition. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. Copyright 2020, Absolute Recap LLC, all rights reserved.